As the girls and Rife were headed back to their classes, Matt and Will were getting into Will's car. Will was telling him that everything might seem bad now, but that prayer would help him to say the right things when he got home and faced his mother. They were so caught up in their conversation that they didn't notice the man taking their pictures as he drove past them in his maroon van. They also didn't notice that the man started slamming his fist on the steering wheel and punching himself in the face and mouth after putting down the camera. They didn't even notice the blood that was slowly running from the busted lip he had given himself. They just buckled themselves into the coach's car and slowly pulled away from the curb on the way to Matt's house. Jay. Jay, what are you doing down there? Isn't this where you live? Suppose your aunt comes out and sees you. you you'll get in trouble, Jose said in a voice that sounded as terrified as he looked. Jose was a pimple-faced, overweight Mexican freshman who was super glad to be in Jay's group because it kept him from getting picked on by the older, meaner kids. Walking on his own block in broad daylight while he was supposed to be in school with the chance that his aunt might walk out her door at any minute and see him was exactly what Jay wanted. He really hoped she would walk out right now and see him standing there looking back at her, and he imagined the look on her face. She would be shocked and angry because he would be smiling at her and giving her the finger at the same time. He wondered if she would yell at him or even hit him, but figured she wouldn't since she was always trying to be Miss Proper and Miss Sididi. He chuckled to himself and kept walking towards his house. As far as he was concerned, he was going to do whatever he wanted, and if his aunt didn't like it, then she could just go pass him along to the next relative. His anticipation grew with every step. He looked around to see if any of the neighbors were around because he wanted an audience for the grand showdown. Suddenly, he became confused and angry when he noticed his aunt's car was not in the driveway. Doggone it, she ain't home. Where the heck did she go? She's always home, he said angrily. That's good though, right? asked Jose nervously as he pranced back and forth looking around. No, that's not good, you idiot. I want my stupid aunt to be home. I want her to see me. You want her to see you? She know you coming home? No, dummy. She don't know I'm coming home, but I want her to see me anyway. But if she don't know you coming home and she see you, won't she be mad? That's the whole idea, you jerk. But, but nothing. Shut up, he said as he tried to think what he was going to do next. Just then he noticed old Mr. Weinstein coming out of his house up the street and yelled for his friend to duck. Jose ducked nervously behind a car as Jay stood looking and then waved at his elderly neighbor. Mr. Weinstein looked at the kid from across the street with hesitation and waved back at him. He was surprised that the kid had waved since he knew him to be a surly, arrogant, and disrespectful little boy. He had known Mrs. Jones ever since she had moved there several years ago with her husband 
He remembered when she came home from the hospital after the birth of her triplets. She was a beautiful, respectful, God-fearing woman, and her children were very nice kids. He couldn't ask for better neighbors than the Joneses. If you needed anything, all you had to do was ask and she would help, no questions asked. He could remember several times when he had come home from shopping or when he'd be sweeping or shoveling and her son would help without even being asked. But this new kid was sullen and disrespectful. And he could remember on a few occasions when he had spoken to him and he could swear the kid had said a curse word under his breath. He hadn't said anything to Mrs. Jones because he had seen her fussing with him a couple of times and he was sure she knew the kid was a bad seed. He figured why bother her with something she already obviously knew about. So when the kid waved at him, he warily waved back and continued on his way. He didn't know what he was up to, but he certainly wasn't going to get into a conversation with him. The more distance there was between him and the bad little fart, the better. Jay motioned for Jose to stay behind the car and walked up to his front door pretending to ring the bell, all as a show for Mr. Weinstein. He wanted the old man to think he was going inside. He kept sneaking peeks in the old man's direction until he had gotten into his car and had driven out of sight. As soon as his car turned a corner, he motioned for Jose to follow him as he headed across the street to Mr. Weinstein's house. Hey, where are you going? I thought we were going to your house, whispered Jose in a voice edged with panic. Change of plans, stated Jay as he headed towards Mr. Weinstein's house. Change of plans? Wait, why are we going over here? Know what? You ask too many questions. But Jay, what you gonna do? Whatever I'm gonna do, you're doing with me. Why? Why I gotta do it? Jose asked with tears starting to fill his eyes. He had agreed to go with Jay because he thought it would be cool to skip out of school with the scariest kid in school. He knew that when word got out that he and Jay had cut school, none of the other boys would mess with him again. Jay told him they were going to go to his house and hang out for a couple of hours and then head back to the mall. He didn't know his aunt was supposed to be there and he certainly didn't know why they were going to do what it looked like Jay was planning to do. He wanted to leave. He wanted to run all the way back to school and get back in his seat and do his math work. He didn't even care if it meant he would get in trouble for leaving the building and coming back in. All he wanted to do was get as far away from Jay and what he was about to do as possible. But he knew that if he tried to run, Jay would probably beat him to a pulp. Jose hated teachers and cops for what he wouldn't give for a cop to drive by right now. He wished the truant officers would come now and arrest them for not being in school. He wished Jay's aunt would suddenly drive up and make them go inside her house with her and call his parents to come take him home. And more than anything, he wished the old man would come back home. He wished and he wished and he wished, but he knew none of his wishes were going to come true. He knew there was no way he was going to get away from Jay. Come on, man, let's go, Jay said as he crouched and sprinted across the street towards Mr. Weinstein's house. Knowing he had passed the point of no return, he crouched and followed Jay to Mr. Weinstein's house. Jay knew Jose was afraid of going along with his change of plans, but he didn't care. At first, all he wanted to do was to get his aunt mad at him, but this was even better. He was going to get the whole family mad at him. 
He knew all the nosy old people on this block, watched everything that went on, and knew he would get busted. But that was exactly what he wanted. He could kill three birds with one stone today. He would get his aunt mad at him, get his cousins mad at him, and make his neighbors afraid of him. When this day was over, no one would look at him the same, and he would never have to worry about anybody bullying him ever again. Looking from window to window, he took his time walking around and looking in all the windows of Mr. Weinstein's house. He took his sweet time because he wanted to get caught. He knew that the longer he took, the better his chances of getting caught were. Jose was so afraid, his stomach was beginning to do funny little lurches, and he was afraid he was going to throw up the oatmeal he had eaten for breakfast this morning. He had stopped wishing that something would happen to stop their plans. Now he was wishing for a bathroom because he had to pee in the worst way. He kept taking deep breaths to stop his breakfast from splattering all over the old man's yard because he knew that if he did, Jay would probably hit him. And now, to make matters worse, he had to pee. He couldn't remember when he had ever had to pee so badly. He grabbed his crotch and started jumping up and down with tears filling his eyes. What's wrong with you? demanded Jay, looking at Jose like he had just lost his mind. I gotta pee, man, and I can't hold it, Jose answered, almost doubling over in an attempt to prevent his bladder from spilling its content down the front of his pants. So why are you jumping around like that for? Go ahead and pee. Where am I pee at? asked Jose, looking around as if a toilet was hidden somewhere in the yard, and he missed it. What you mean, where you gonna pee at? Pee right there in that bush, Jay said through clenched teeth. Jay knew that Jose was a punk. That's why he was always getting picked on, and that's why Jay had picked him to go with him. He knew that Jose would do anything he told him to do just so he could be in Jay's company. But Jay had no patience for this sniveling little coward that was about to pee in his pants and was debating whether to tell him to get lost or not when he heard the police sirens. He turned his head just in time to see the curtains behind him fall back into place and knew that the man that had no legs and rode around in the motorized wheelchair had called the police. He knew it would be just a matter of minutes before they would be there. He was about to get his moment of fame, and it was not going to turn out the way he wanted. He had wanted to be inside old Mr. Weinstein's house when the police got there. He had pictured it all in his mind as soon as he had seen the old man walk out of his house, and now all of his plans were going up in smoke, all because Jose was a punk and had to pee. He turned to look at the window that he knew the crippled man was watching him from and thought about throwing a rock through it when he heard the police siren and the engine of the car as it turned the corner and came down his block. He turned to look at Jose as tears began sliding down his face just as large wet stain began blooming down the front of his pants. He thought about smashing him in the face for crying like a little baby and preventing him from carrying out his plan. He thought about all the neighbors that were watching as the police got out of the car and ordered him and Jose to raise their hands in the air and get down on the ground. He thought about all the kids at school that would hear about this and have new respect for him and never bully him again. He thought about Matt and Vet and Nett and how they would probably steer clear of him in the future. He thought about all these things and felt an excitement rush through him that made him feel almost giddy. 
Then the face of his sisters flashed through his mind and he had a moment's regret. He shrugged it off and as soon as their faces vanished, he saw his aunt and the moment returned. He saw her soft brown eyes that squinted just a little when she smiled, furrowed with worry when he was quiet and sullen and filled with disappointment when he answered her with disrespect. And he felt a slight tug at his heart. He closed his eyes tight to make the picture go away. And as soon as his mind was free of the image of his aunt's frowning face, it was filled with the image of his mother. And he felt the hairs on the back of his neck stand on end. He saw her the way she looked, standing in the doorway of their house, the morning she died waving at him and his sisters as they rode off to school, not knowing they would never see her again. He was back on the school bus, and the racist driver was yelling at him to take his seat as the white kids yelled at him to sit down or get off the bus. He looked around in confusion because he was sure he had left all this behind. And here he was again, and all he could hear was, Do you hear me, boy? 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 I asked you what's your name and what are you doing here? yelled the police officer as he leaned close to Jay's face and shook him to get his attention. Jay looked around in confusion. He wasn't on the school bus. He was standing in Mr. Weinstein's yard with Jose across the street from his aunt's house. He had cut school and was about to break into this old man's house and this white man was yelling in his face and calling him a boy, just like the racist bus driver. I asked you your name and I want an answer. Why aren't you boys in school and what are you doing in this yard? Do you live here? Where are your parents? Asked the officer looking from one boy to the other. He would have gotten all the information he needed from Jose, except he was sprouting water like a water fountain. He was crying so much the officers just took him and placed him in the police car. Since Jay seemed to be coherent enough to shed some light on the situation, the officer was attempting to at least get their names, but Jay wasn't giving up anything. Look, kid, you are already in a lot of trouble. Don't make matters worse by not cooperating. We got a report of prowlers and we find you and your little friend here. Do you live here? What's your name? Where are your parents? Why aren't you in school? What's your name? No answer, huh? Well, you're just making things worse for you. Come on, get in the car, the officer said as he led him to the car and placed him in the back seat next to a sniffling Jose. As the boys sat in the back of their car, Jay noticed that several of the neighbors had noticed the police car and were standing in their doorways. He knew they had seen him as he was escorted to the back of the car. But for some strange reason, he was not as elated as he had thought he was going to be. He thought he was going to feel excited and famous with everyone watching him and knowing that he was a dangerous person. But the feeling of helplessness and shame that washed over him had him instead feeling confused and frightened. What had happened? This was not the way it was supposed to be. He was supposed to be glad, not sad.